everyone! Welcome to the Jada and Stitches Show. We've got an early spring tutorial for you today. We are going to make a lovely brand new baby blanket using a very elegant crochet stitch and an equally sweet little border. Lovely, fancy looking, not difficult. We're going to take you through it stitch by stitch. And we are going to use an ice cream big scoop by Lion Brand Yarns. We'd like to thank Lion Brand for sponsoring today's video. I really enjoy the Ice Cream Big Scoop. Ice Cream is a size 3 lightweight or baby weight 100% acrylic yarn. It comes in a lot of really pretty colorways. In fact, if you'd like to see what some of the other colorways look like in other stitches, we've done a few different baby blankets using Ice Cream Big Scoop here on the channel. We'll link them down below. This is Lemon Meringue. Love that. I'm a big fan of the Big Scoop in particular because there's over 1,100 yards per skein. So by the time you finish with a blanket like this, which is pretty big, it's 36 by 38, you'll still have enough yarn left over to make a pair of baby booties or something if you want to give this as a gift. We will link to Lion Brand Yarns down below so you can pop over to their website and check out all the different colors that the Ice Cream Big Scoop comes in. This particular colorway is Lemon Meringue. I love it because it reminds me of my fluffy dog. 80s kids out there, you know what I'm talking about? My fluffy dog was this color in particular. It was the yellows and whites. Absolutely love this. Love this pattern. This is a real fun project to stitch up. So without further ado, let's grab our hooks, we'll grab our ice cream big scoop, we'll head on over to the craft table, and we will stitch up a brand new baby blanket together. For today's baby blanket, I'm using Ice Cream Big Scoop by Lion Brand Yarns. This is a size 3 lightweight or baby weight yarn. There's an awful lot of yarn in each skein. There's over a thousand meters or over 1100 yards. You probably will not need all of this, so you'll have some left over for maybe a little something extra if you're making a gift. This is the colorway Lemon Meringue. Absolutely beautiful, lots of yellow and white. You're gonna want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and possibly some stitch markers. A measuring tape might be handy too. And I'm using a five millimeter hook. This is also known as an H or an eight. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. We're going to begin with a slip knot. This pattern can be worked over a foundation chain row that is any multiple of nine plus three extra chains. For today's baby blanket, I'll be chaining 129. If you just want to work a quick sample, chain 21. Once you've chained 129 or 21 for a sampler or a foundation chain that is any multiple of nine plus three, we're all gonna begin the same way. We're going to skip the first chain from the hook and single crochet into the second chain. We're going to single crochet into the chain after that. Row one or an odd row always begins with two single crochets. Now we skip three chains. Skip three chains, find the fourth, and we're going to work a fan. A fan, for the purpose of this pattern, is double crochet chain one, repeated five times into the same chain. So double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one. That's five double crochet chain ones and one more double crochet. That's a fan, double crochet, chain one five times, plus an extra double crochet, all worked into the same chain. So you have six double crochets and five chain one spaces in between. That is a fan. We skip three chains, find the next one and single crochet into it. And that completes a complete motif. And here we go, chain three, but we're not skipping any chains. Instead, we single crochet right into the next chain. So in between your fans, you're gonna have a single crochet, chain three, and then a single crochet into those next two stitches. Now, 
we skip three chains, find the next one, and work a fan into it. Double crochet, chain one, five times, all into the same chain. Once you have five double crochet chain ones, double crochet once more into that same chain. And that is your fan. Six double crochets, all separated by a chain one. Skip three chains, find the next one, and single crochet into it. Chain three, and single crochet into the next chain immediately next to that. So this is the pattern all the way across. We start with a single crochet, we skip three chains, work a fan, double crochet, chain one, five times, double crochet once more, all into the same chain, skip three chains, single crochet, chain three, and then we start all over again. Single crochet into the next chain immediately, we skip three chains, we start a fan, double crochet, chain one, five times, plus a double crochet, all worked into the same chain, skip three chains, single crochet, and then chain three, and single crochet immediately into the next chain. You're going to repeat that all the way across, and I'll catch up with you at the end of row one. When you get across to the end, you're going to finish the row with your last fan stitch, so that's double crochet, chain one, five times, plus one last double crochet, all worked into the same chain. You're going to skip three chains, and that'll leave you with two chains left. You're going to single crochet into the second last chain. We're not chaining anything extra this time. We're going to single crochet into the last chain. So the odd row of the pattern begins and ends with two single crochets. Two single crochets to start the row, two single crochets to end the row. In between your fans, you have a single crochet chain three, and then a single crochet in the next stitch. You skip three chains, and then your fan, double crochet, chain one, five times, double crochet, all into the same chain, skip three chains, and then single crochet. And if you're running across the middle, chain three, and then it starts all over again, single crochet, skip three, etc. So that is the odd row, but that's just the foundation row. It's gonna look a little different when we get into row three. So first row is complete. Let's move into row two. In row two, we are going to bring some split shells into the game. So here we go. At the end of an odd row, we chain three and turn. The chain three counts as a double crochet. So you turn your work around. You're looking at those two single crochets that you finished the previous row with. The chain three counts as a double crochet, so that takes care of single crochet number one. You're going to double crochet into the next stitch, which was the other single crochet down there. So you go double crochet, double crochet basically. So think of it like that. And then you're looking at your fan. You're going to chain two, take a look at your fan, and you've got six double crochets in that fan. One, two, three, one, two, three. There's a chain one space in between. Skip the first two double crochets. Look for the two middle double crochets in that fan, separated by a chain one in the middle. Into the first of those two middle double crochet stitches, you're going to single crochet, chain three, skip that chain in between, find the single, the double crochet right next to it, and single crochet into the top of that. So single crochet, chain three, into the first of those middle two double crochet stitches. Ignore the middle chain, single crochet into the second. So you're working that little single crochet, chain three, single crochet into the top two middle double crochet stitches of the fan. You're going to chain two now. You're going to look for the chain three space, that little space in between your single crochets from the previous row, so ignore the rest of your fan, you're looking for this, and we're going to work a split shell into it. For the purpose of this pattern, a split shell is two double crochet, chain two, and two double crochet all worked into the same chain three space. Two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. That 
is a split shell that will be worked into the chain three spaces that sit between single crochets in this pattern. You're going to chain two. And now we're back to a fan. You've got six double crochets in that fan. You want the two middle ones single crochet into the first of those two middle double crochet stitches, chain three, and single crochet into the other middle, the second middle double crochet stitch. So you're working single crochet, chain three, single crochet into the top of those two middle stitches. All right. So your single crochet, chain three, single crochets sit in the middle of your fans, chain two, now you're looking for the chain three space between your fans down here and a split shell goes into it. Two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet all into the same chain three space. Mm -hmm. Chain two, that brings you back to a fan. You've got six double crochets in that fan. You want the two middle ones. Single crochet into the top of the first one. Chain three. And single crochet into the top of the second one. And that puts that right in the top middle of your fan. Chain two. Now you're back to a chain three space in between your fans and split shell. Two double crochet. Chain two, two double crochet. Chain two and the whole thing starts all over again. So you're looking for the little tiny motif which is single crochet into the third double crochet of the fan, chain three, double, single crochet into the second of those two middle stitches. So single crochet, chain three, single crochet, worked into the top two middle double crochets of the fan from the previous row. Chain two, so chain two away from that little mini motif, and now you're looking at the previous row's chain three space and you work a split shell into it. Two double crochet, chain two, and then two double crochet. Chain two to leave the split shell, and you're back to that little single crochet, chain three, single crochet, worked across the top of the middle two stitches in the fan. That's what you're doing for row two. That's an even row. I'm going to let you work away at that and I will catch up with you at the end of row two. At the end of row two or an even row, you're going to finish with single crochet, chain three, into the first of those two middle double crochets and then single crochet into the second of those two middle double crochets. So remember that little thing is worked across the middle two double crochets of a fan. Chain two and now you're looking at the last two single crochets that finish the row. Remember the odd rows begin and end with two single crochets. Well the even rows begin and end with two double crochets. So you're going to double crochet into the first of those two single crochets and then double crochet into the last stitch too. So even rows begin with two double crochet or a chain three and then a double crochet and they end with two double crochet. A double crochet in each of those last two stitches. So this is what we've got now. We've got a row, row one, that establishes our large fan stitches and then row two, the even row, that has the split shells in them. And both rows create a little single crochet, chain three, single crochet motif that's always worked across a couple of stitches. So that's the end of row two, that's an even row. Let's do row three, which is an odd row, together because row three is now, you're going to repeat rows two and three for the rest of the blanket. And row three is very much like row one, but uh, row one's worked across the foundation chain row, so we're going to work row three together. At the end of an even row, chain one and turn. We're going to begin the row with a single crochet in each of the first two stitches. So you single crochet into that first stitch and single crochet into the second stitch. 
So single crochet in each of those first two stitches. Now you're just looking for that easy to find chain three space in the middle of a fan. So you see that your fan, there's gonna be a chain three space. Look for that chain three space and into that big space you're gonna work a fan. So double crochet, chain one, five times. And then one more double crochet all into that same chain three space. So once again, a fan is double crochet, chain one, five times, and then double crochet all worked into the same space. And in this case now, they're being worked into chain three spaces. After a fan, you don't have to chain anything. You're going to find the next chain two space now. So this is the space between the split shells. So you ignore this, ignore this chain two space, look for the split shell, and work a single crochet, chain three, single crochet. Single crochet, chain three, single crochet gets worked into the space that's the middle of a split shell. You do not have to chain anything, now you're looking for the chain three space. You're going to work a fan into it. Double crochet, chain one, five times. And then double crochet once more. So your sixth double crochet. Double crochet, chain one, five times double crochet all worked into the chain three space. Skip to the split shell. It's the chain two space in the middle of the split shell you're looking for and work single crochet, chain three, single crochet into it. Now you're looking for the chain three space and you're working a fan. So all of your fan motifs will sit directly above the previous fan motifs. They're not off set. But in between rows where you use a fan motif, you will have to create that little single crochet, chain three, single cro crochet thing that sets you up to make that wide fan in upcoming rows. So you see, there's the fan from row one. So all of your fans are made on odd rows. Row one, row three. They'll always sit directly on top of each other, but in row two, you're making that little single crochet, chain three, single crochet in the middle top of the fan. So in row four, it'll be, um, you're gonna be looking for these two stitches. It's always the middle two double crochets, so single crochet, chain three, single crochet. And that sets you up so that in the next odd row, you can create your fan in it. Uh, when you create a single crochet, chain three, single crochet, in between your, fa your fans, on the even rows, a split shell goes into this. So split shells always sit in between your fans. Two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. And then you're chaining two to get away from it. But we're gonna do, chain, we're gonna do row four together, <laughs> just so we're all on the same page. So after you complete a fan on an odd row, single crochet, chain three, single crochet into the space that's the middle of the split shell. So you're always looking for the middle of a previous motif to do something. All right? Single crochet, chain three, single crochet in the middle of the split shell. And then that brings you back here and that's another fan stitch. So I'm gonna let you work away at finishing row three. I'll catch up at the end of row three and we'll start row four together as well. When you finish an odd row, you work your last fan into that chain three space, and then you're left with two stitches at the end. So that's a double crochet and the chain three that began the previous row. And because an odd row begins with two single crochet, it needs to end with two single crochet. So single crochet into the top of that second last double crochet and find the top of the chain three and single crochet into that. So you're single crocheting into the top of the last two stitches. 
that's an odd row. You're going to be re repeating rows two and three throughout the blanket now. Uh, rows two, even row. Row three, odd row. But we're going to work row four. Uh, we're going to get it started together. This is an even row, just so you can remember where we're at. We're going to chain three and turn. Chain three counts as a double crochet. Because the chain three counts as a double crochet, it's already using that first single crochet. So we're going to double crochet into the next stitch. And row two, or the even row, is the row where you've got chains in between things. So after you finish that double crochet, you're going to chain two. You remember what to do in the middle of a fan. You find those two middle double crochet stitches, single crochet into the first middle double crochet stitch there, chain three, and then single crochet into that second middle stitch. So you're looking for the two middle stitches in a fan from the previous row and working single crochet, chain three, single crochet across the two of them. Chain two. Now you're looking for the chain three space in between fans, so you're dipping down and you work a split shell. So the even rows are the split shell rows. Two double crochet, chain two, and two double crochet. When you finish with a split shell, chain two, and then you're back to that fan. Find the two middle stitches, single crochet, chain three, single crochet. And that goes in the middle of the fan. Chain two, dipping down to the chain three space in between fans, and you're adding a split shell. Two double crochet, chain two, and two double crochet. You're going to repeat that all the way across. From here on out, the even row is always the same, and the odd row is always the same. And the odd rows, so the fan rows, the odd rows have the fan in them, they begin and end with two single crochet. The even rows, the split shell rows, they begin and end with two double crochet. Or remember that the first stitch of the row is the turning chain, so chain three counts double crochet. When you get all the way back across on an odd row, you're making sure you end with a single crochet in the last double crochet and a single crochet in the top of those turning chains. Keep treating those turning chains like a double crochet stitch. All right, I'm going to turn you loose. I'm going to let you work that pattern for a little while. I'll catch up with you in a few rows and we'll talk, whoops, measurements and sizing. I have just finished row seven. So I've been repeating rows two and three, two and three, or even odd, even odd. And row seven is an odd row. The odd row is the one with the fan stitch in it. Every time you get to the end of an odd row, you'll have added an extra two and a half centimeters or an inch to the height of your blanket. So I've got four fan stitch rows. My blanket is already about four inches or 10 centimeters tall. Now, with that in mind, I'm going to work to the end of row 65, repeating rows two, three, two, three over and over again. You can do as many rows as you want uh, to, until it's as tall as you like, or if you're just working on a sampler, you can do fewer rows. Uh, but just keep in mind, you want to end on an odd row or a fan stitch row. Because the last row we do of the blanket before we start into the border is going to square things up. So row 66 for me, or the final row in your blanket before the border, will be a squaring up row. So just keep that in mind. You can repeat the pattern as many times as you want, just be sure to end on an odd row. Now, I chose to go with 129 chains in my foundation chain row, which means that every odd row I will have 14 fans. So I'll have 14 of these little fan stitches, and I'll have 13 of the little chain three spaces in between. Alternatively, on an even row, when I'm using the split shell stitch, I'll have 13 of the little split shells, and I'll have 14 of the little chain three spaces that sit on top of the fans. So every nine chains, and remember the multiple of nine plus a little three extra chains at the end, every nine chains is one full motif. So I did 14 times nine, I have 14 
bands and that will be consistent throughout every single odd row and you'll always have one less split shell on the even rows. So depending on how many chains you did, uh, that's how you can figure out how many motifs you should have in each row. Right, I'm going to let you go, work away at that, and I will catch up with you at the end of row 65. I have reached the end of row 65 now. Most importantly, I'm ending on an odd row. That's the fan stitch row. And the last row, you can make as many rows as you want. Just make sure you're ending on an odd row, that fan stitch row. The last row of the blanket is to flatten off the top and bring the stitch count down to match the bottom. So the top of your blanket and the bottom of your blanket will both be flat and the stitch count will be the same and this will allow us to put on a border. So here we go. At the end of your last row, in odd row, in my case, row 65, you're going to chain three and turn. And let's flatten off the top of this very curvy blanket. We are going to double crochet into the next stitch, chain two. We're going to skip two double crochet, find the third one single crochet into it, chain one, so only chaining one, hop over the chain one space, find the next double crochet, single crochet into that, so single crochet, chain one, and then single crochet, chain two. Now we're looking for that chain three space that sits above a split shell from the previous row, into this chain two space, we're going to work two double crochet, chain two, and that's it. Now we're going to jump over to the next fan. You're going to find the third double crochet, single crochet, chain one, into the next double crochet stitch, single crochet, chain two, and now you're back to that chain three space, two double crochet, chain two, and we're back to the fan again. So it's very similar to the split shell row. You are still using the top two middle double crochets of the previous rose fan, but you're only working a single crochet, chain one, and then a single crochet into it, chain two, and then instead of a split shell, you're only working two double crochet, and two more chains. And that is going to flatten out the top of our blanket so that we can put on a border. So I'm going to let you work away at that and I'll catch up with you at the end of the row. At the end of the row, you've worked single crochet, chain one, and then single crochet into that second double crochet, chain two, and we're ending the row much like the way we would end the usual even rows. Double crochet into each of the last two stitches, which are both single crochets from the previous row. And that is the top. So we've flattened off the top. Now we just want to create a basic foundation row of single crochet all the way around before we get to the rest of the border. So border row number one, we're going to chain one, turn, we're going to go right into it. We're going to work backwards across the top of the last row, single crochet into each stitch. And if it's a chain two space, it gets two single crochets. There's the single crochet, chain one, single crochet. You're going to single crochet into the single crochet, 
single crochet into the chain one space, single crochet into the single crochet. If it's a chain two space, it gets two single crochets, etc. So every chain space, every chain gets a single crochet, every stitch gets a single crochet. So single crochet in each stitch. If it's a chain one space, it gets a single crochet. If it's a chain two space, it gets two single crochet. And don't worry about trying to work into the chain, just work right into the space. But make sure that there is a single crochet for each chain and a single crochet for each stitch all the way across. And we're just gonna start nice and simple with single crochet. I'll catch up with you at the end of the row. When you get to the end of the row, you're going to be faced with the top of that chain three. So your last single crochet is worked into the top of the chain three. And we're also going to create a little corner here. So single crochet, chain two, and single crochet into the same place. So right into the top of that chain three. So itty bitty little corner. So single crochet, chain two, single crochet. Other than that chain two single crochet, the top of your blanket will now have 128 single crochet stitches running across the top of it, um, or at least an even number if you did a wider version of this blanket than I did. We're gonna work down the side now. We're still using single crochet. You wanna remember that every two rows you have a double crochet, a single crochet, a double crochet, a single crochet, a double crochet, a single crochet, all the way down the side. Around the double crochet stitches, you're gonna work two single crochet stitches. And into the single crochet edges, you're gonna work around that single crochet and just put in one. So double crochets get two single crochets and you can work right around them. And the single crochet edges get one single crochet. So two, one, two, one, all single crochet all the way down the edge. Remember we are just creating a foundation border row. So single crochet all the way down if it's a double crochet edge, it gets two. If it's a single crochet edge, it gets one. Easy peasy, and I'll catch up with you down at the bottom. When you get down to the bottom, you'll have finished the last two single crochets in the edge of the last double crochet, or what was row two, and then you're faced with the edge of row one and your foundation chain row. So you're gonna skip over the edge of that single crochet and just single crochet into the first foundation chain you made. And that way you'll have an even number of stitches running down the edge. Chain two and single crochet in the same place. So that's your little corner. And now it's a single crochet in each chain all the way across the bottom. So if it's uh, three chains that were skipped, make sure that you work three single crochet. Now you can work into the chains if you want. That might be easier rather than trying to count. So there's a single crochet in each of those three chains single crochet in the middle of what was the bottom of a fan. Then you have one, two, three more chains. So single crochet in each of those chains. This does make the bottom a little bit neater. Uh, but if you are kind of a tight crocheter, then you might not have to worry about that so much. You can just sort of work across the spaces if you want to. But I find since I'm looking for the individual chains, because I want to make sure it has the same number of stitches running across the bottom as it did across the top, then it's kind of easier to just look for the chains and single crochet into them. Uh, either way, if you had 128 single crochet across the top of your border row to begin, you want to have 128 single crochet across the bottom. Uh, however many single crochet are across the top of your blanket, to begin your border row is the exact same number you should have across the bottom. So just with that in mind, work your way across the bottom, single crochet, single crochet, single crochet, and I will catch up with you at the other end.
Once you've single crocheted in each chain along the bottom, number 128 will be in the bottom of what was a single crochet at the end of row 1. You're going to also chain 2 and single crochet into the same place and then we start working up the other side. Other side is exactly the same as side 1, so side 2, side 1. You've got the edge of row 1, you're just going to skip it, you're going to go straight into two single crochet around that first double crochet. So you end with single crochet, chain two, single crochet in the bottom of that single crochet, skip over the edge of that single crochet and just start with two single crochet around the double crochet, single crochet around the single crochet, and then two, and one, two, and one. And you can stick that anywhere you like. Just remember it's it's three single crochet for every two rows going up the edge. And you should have exactly the same number of single crochet stitches on side two of your blanket as you had on side one. I'll let you work away at that and I'll see you up at the top. The last two single crochet of border row number one are worked around that last double crochet row edge. That puts you right underneath the first single crochet of the row. So into the same place that that first single crochet was worked, you're going to work a single crochet, chain two for your last corner space, and then slip stitch to join in that first single crochet. If you feel they're hard to see, take a moment and find your chain two corners, you'll have four of them, and just put a little stitch marker in them. That way you know where they are. Single crochet is pretty small, and so are the corner spaces. Uh, either way, you're going to have 456 stitches all the way around and four chain two corner spaces. If you made your blanket different dimensions, more rows, fewer rows, wider, narrower, whatever, you should still have an even number of stitches across the top and bottom that are the same and an even number of stitches across each side that are the same. In this case, there's 128 stitches across the top and bottom and 100 stitches across each side. Make sure you've got an even number all the way around and four to chain four chain two corner spaces and we're going to move on to border row number two. All right, we are not flipping our blanket. We are just going to keep going in the same direction. So we are working back across the top of the blanket again, right from where we joined our row with a slip stitch in the top of that first stitch of row one. We're going to chain one and single crochet into the same stitch. So we're beginning row two of the border with a chain one single crochet in the same place. So you're just past your chain two corner. You want to begin with a single crochet. Into the next three stitches, so every four stitches we're going to create one complete motif. So into the next stitch we're going to work a double crochet, chain one. Into the next stitch we're going to work a double crochet, and then a single crochet into the stitch after that. So every four stitches you're going to have one of these itty bitty simple little motifs. Single crochet, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, single crochet. Let's do another one together. Four stitches. Every four stitches we'll have a complete motif. Single crochet into the first stitch of the four, double crochet into the next stitch, chain one, double crochet into the next stitch, and single crochet into the next stitch or the fourth stitch. So every four stitches you're going to get one of these. Just a simple easy peasy little rounded kind of shell. It sort of reflects the split shell feeling. It kind of is rounded like the little fans. We're kind of combining both of those two concepts together. Let's do one more. There's the four stitches. We're going to work across those four stitches. Single crochet into the first stitch, double crochet into the next stitch, chain one, double crochet into the next stitch, and single crochet into the fourth stitch. There you go. I'll let you work at that all the way across and I'll catch up with you at the next corner.
your last little motif of single crochet, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, single crochet, will finish off the last four stitches across the top of your blanket that will bring you up to your little itty bitty chain two corner space. Into that corner space you're going to work two single crochet. So you're just creating a nice rounded edge as you turn the corner. So now we're going to work down the sides of our blanket and it's the same thing. You start that little motif in the very first stitch, single, double chain one, double, single. So don't miss that first single crochet after you leave the corner. Single crochet, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, and single crochet. So you're working across four stitches at a time. Every four stitches is single crochet, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, single crochet. It's the same thing all the way around the blanket and in the little corner spaces, the chain two corner spaces, you're just going to work two single crochet. So your, your blanket edges are, or your corners are nice and rounded and small. All right, I'm going to let you guys work away at border row two. Remember it's single, double chain one, double, single, when you get down to the chain two corner it's two single crochet in the chain two corner and then you just continue with that motif all the way around and I'll catch up with you back at the beginning. Your last motif will end in the single crochet right before your last chain two corner space. Work two single crochet into that final chain two corner space and join with a slip stitch to the top of that chain or single crochet that began the row. So there you go. You can fasten off grab your yarn needle and then weave your tail in back and forth a few times underneath either some of those single crochets or the motifs from the re previous row or you can take it down right down to that first row first border row of single crochet, which is kind of what I like to do because it's typically a little bit tighter. And then you can weave it back and forth underneath those stitches. Um, if your tails, or your, I should say if your tension's a little on the loose side, make sure you cut a longer tail and weave it in back and forth a few times because you don't want it to come undone. Otherwise, back and forth three or four times. Maybe I'll go under a few more stitches here. Uh, if you've got fairly tight stitching like me, my tension's fairly tight, then that tail woven back and forth a couple times should not want to come out at all. A really pretty and elegant little stitch pattern, an equally sweet little border to go with it. I'm really, really pleased with the way this came out. Um, it's a decent sized blanket too, so as the little guy or girl gets bigger, um, she can pull it around with her and treat it like a little security blanket. This is a nice size for just about anything. You could have it in the playpen, you could have it on the car seat, you can take it to grandma's, you know what I mean? Um, it's the kind of pretty blanket you can just sort of drape over the baby if they're just in a onesie, because when they're really little you don't want to have them in anything too fancy because you've got to keep changing them <laughs> every five minutes. So a pretty blanket is like clothing, right? <laughs> anyway, we hope you enjoyed making this along with us this week. If you are curious about blocking, maybe you want to block your blanket, wash it and block it uh, before you give it away as a gift, we will link to our wash and block and steam blocking tutorials down below in the description box in case you need a little help with that or you're new to the whole world of blocking. And once again, we'd like to thank Line Brand for sponsoring today's video. Big fan of the ice cream big scoop here. I could just fill an entire closet with them. <laughs> Especially, especially when they remind me of my toys from the 80s. I just love this. Anyway, we will see you soon here on the Jade and Stitches show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have a great week. Bye, guys. Hi, everybody. Mr. and Stitches here. Thank you for watching today. Here are some of our other videos you might be interested in. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.